Okay, it is time for another mini lecture. Uh, this mini lecture is called uh, Sentences Level 5, and it's um, uh, a mini lecture that I've put together to answer a request from a student. Now, some of these sentences here are a little bit more of a creative um, application of the components, the pieces that we have been learning uh, over the last several weeks. Um, and even though we're moving forward into more advanced learning, it's a, not a bad idea to always go back and review things um, that have come before. Now in particular, we're going to be looking at simple sentences with compound verbs, complex complex sentences, and compound compound sentences. So let's jump straight into it. So this is a little bit of a review because you can actually find this sentence structure on your uh, worksheet, the one that I gave out that is called Sentences Reviewed and, and Redeployed, which has a list of all the formulas and then examples. Um, so basically, uh, this, this shouldn't be 100% new, but um, let's take a look at it anyways. So this is a very common structure, and uh, we use this structure in particular when there is one subject it, which is kind of the, the main uh, focus point of the sentence and the subject is doing two different now or two different verbs and usually you're going to use the linking word and in the middle here um, so that's a, that's one subject right and it's doing two actions so that's why we call it a compound verb because the verb is being both of those verbs are being done by the same um, subject down at the beginning of the sentence. So let's take a look at the formula. Um, so the formula is very simple, C1, um, and you'll notice that this is what this is going to equal is it's one, it's still one clause, right? Because we know that the definition of a clause in English is that it needs to have both a subject and a verb. Now, so we have our, our subject noun there in blue. Uh, then we've got verb one and verb two. Now after these verbs, there might be additional items. We know that some additional items can come after verbs, right? Things like objects or prepositional phrases that tell us a little bit more detail. Um, and we'll see in the examples that this is this is normal, but the key point here is that there's one main main subject, and that is the, the subject noun, and that noun is doing both of the actions within the sentence. The actions are going to be linked by the word and, and that's the compound uh, feature here. So you can see there in, in the brackets over here, I've highlighted the idea that because there's no second subject noun, we do not need a comma um, to, to connect these ideas. Basically, that first subject is carried over and connected to that second verb by our coordinating conjunction and. So let's take a look at an example. Example one, Boromir wanted the ring and tried to take it. Um, so you can see it's following the structure exactly the way that we mentioned it above, but we've got an object here uh, in, in both cases after each of the two verbs. Now because there's only one subject, we don't need a comma in the middle. We could rewrite it if we wanted to, and we could change it into a compound sentence. We could write, Boromir wanted the ring, comma, and he tried to take it. In that case, you would need a comma here. Now, both of the sentences, they carry the exact same information. It's just a choice about how we want to write them. Uh, it's a style choice, essentially. But remember, if you include that pronoun, he, in the second clause, we want to see that comma in the middle. If you decide you don't want that pronoun, you remove it, you, you kind of take it out as we've done here, then you need to remove the comma as well. Okay, let's look at another example. So Vivian baked a delicious pie and donated it to the SPCA. Uh, again, we can see Vivian is the uh, main subject noun here as she's matching the color. We've got all of our subject nouns in blue, all of our V1s in red, all of our V2s in purple. Um, so baked, and then the, here's this object again, a delicious pie. So that's an object noun receiving the action, right? And there's our linking element, our coordinate conjunction, donated it to the SPCA. So we've got uh, an object here, the pronoun it, and we've also got a prepositional phrase that tells us a little bit more detail about who is who is receiving it or who actually she's giving the pie to. Um, so again, if we wanted to rewrite this sentence as a compound sentence, we would um, add the uh, pronoun she here, and then we'd also have to include the comma. So again, this is purely a stylistic choice of how to write it. I just want you to be clear about what both of your options are. If the one 
Subject noun is carrying both the actions. You don't need the comma in the middle. If you decide to include the pronoun in the second clause, you will need the comma. Okay, let's move on to the next new uh, sentence structure. So this is complex, complex sentences. Now this is where you're only going to use subordinating conjunctions to join your ideas. So again, with the level of writing that we're getting getting to here, like you guys should be getting really comfortable with all of these different component pieces of the sentences. And it's like a Lego game, right? So once you become comfortable with all the component pieces, you can pretty much just swap in any of those pieces to build whatever creative sentences that you want to make. Um, that's why I like the, the, the metaphor of the Lego or the analogy of the Lego is that once you become comfortable with how to use the pieces, they can plug in uh, they all connect as long as we know how to connect them properly. So let's take a look at these sentences now. Okay, so that was, uh, that was uh, I was hoping that they would come in one at a time, but you know me, I'm just going to adapt to the situation, so we'll move through these ideas. So first one states that three ideas are joined, and they're going to be joined with subordinate conjunctions. So then we've got our formula here. This is the first type of formula. You can see there's an alternative down here. But we start with a subordinate conjunction. We've got C1, then a comma, C2, then our second subordinate conjunction, and then C3, and now we always need a period at the end, right? So here's just a quick reminder of what some of our most common subordinate conjunctions are. Um, if you need to review this, uh, I put up a list of 50 common subordinate conjunctions earlier, back when we were learning sentences in, in Module 1 and 2. Um, but here are some of the most common ones. Although, since, as, if, as if, when, though, whenever, because, as well as, once. Now there's many. Um, if you need to review them, I'd recommend just printing off that, that PDF of the 50 most common ones that, that I've up, uh, uploaded to our, our website and paste it into your notebook so that you can have them right in front of you. So let's take an a look at the example here of this first structure following our first formula. Since Michael was starving, comma, he went to B's cafe because she made the best pies. So again, we can track through this. Here's our first subordinate conjunction. Here's our subject noun. Here's our main verb of clause one. Now we know from our formula we need this comma here before we start clause two. So there's our comma. Here's our second subject noun. It's a pronoun actually, but it's doing the job of the noun. He, there's our next main verb, went. Now here's this additional piece of information, a prepositional phrase that tells us about location, to be's cafe. Here's our second subordinate conjunction. And we can see it's following the formula, right? So this is like... Actually, with this formula, what you're kind of doing here is you're combining a complex A with a complex B, and you're kind of joining those, you're, you're linking, you're kind of connecting those Lego pieces together um, because she made the best pie. So she is the uh, subject noun, made is the main verb, and then the best pies is the object noun phrase, okay? Um, so that's the, this is the most... Um, kind of powerful or common or smooth complex complex structure that I would like to see you guys using but there is an alternative and the alternative is um, it's kind of like complex B and complex B married together so this one up here is complex A complex B this one is complex B complex B so this one will actually have no commas in it and I will challenge you um, to try to write me one example following this alternate formula, or actually two examples, sorry, writing this alternate formula as part of the writing task that's coming up at the end of the presentation. Okay, last but not least, compound, compound sentences. So again, this is where we're joining three ideas, but instead of using subordinate conjunctions, we're going to use our coordinating conjunctions, which are the fanboys family. The formula will look like this, C1, comma, coordinating conjunction, C2, comma, coordinating conjunction, C3. So again, you can see that again, we're just kind of accordioning this idea out. So it's just like a compound sentence, but you're just attaching one more layer of, of, of a C3 with your, with your coordinating conjunction as your, your comma coordinating conjunction as your linking element. Just a reminder, fanboys family are for and nor, but or yet. So let's check out uh, our example. Reading novels improves brain functions comma, and it also increases neural flexibility, comma, but people prefer their phones. Okay, so we can see there we've got three ideas. They're joined by this same structure, the, the, that comma fanboy structure, which is used to compound our clauses, right? So we've got a compound, compound sentence. 
Excellent. So you will also have to write a couple of examples of, of this type of sentence. Let's take a look at our writing task. So writing task, and this writing task is called We All Write Them All. So I would like you to include two examples for each of these formulas. So we, we looked at four different formulas, right? The simple uh, sentence with a compound verb. So you'll need to write me two examples for that. Then we've got both of the alternate possibilities for complex complex, the one where we marry complex A and complex B together, and the second one where we marry complex B and complex B together. And then finally, uh, I would like you to do two examples for compound compound. So that's eight sentences all together. Now, make sure that you include the formula that you think you're using above each of your sentence examples. I just want to make sure that you can correctly attach the right formula to your example. And also I would like you to go through before you submit this and double check uh, all of your subjects, verbs, and conjunctions to make sure that they are where they should be. All right, so this is this is essentially um, one more level of sentence writing and again we're just trying to build our comfortability and our fluency with those sentence components to the point where you can plug and play taking any of those clause types and marrying them together smoothly with the right transitional strategies.